Well, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for the invitation and the honor to give you a presentation. So I, I'll talk about uh, um, a report on a, <coughs> in, on a work in collaboration with uh, Juan Davila and Manuel Del Pino uh, from the University of Bath and uh, Shrish Parmeshwar, who was in Bath. He, he has been in Bath for uh, a little bit more of and two years, and now he's in, uh, at Imperial College, and he's here. All right, so um, I'll talk about uh, the Euler equation in dimension two, and uh, omega, just to clarify the uh, notation, omega is the vorticity, psi is the stream function. Uh, the gradient perp, or the perp is uh, with this, uh, notation, so a b perp is b minus a, and the vorticity with the stream function are related through uh, the minus Laplacian inverse, so you can recover your uh, stream function uh, considering the convolution with the fundamental solution uh, of the Laplace operator in, in R2. So, uh, so we recognize the transport part of the Euler equation and the elliptic part of the Euler equation, and we can recover the velocity. I, I would like to start with a very uh, simple observation, namely that uh, if you have a solution of a semi-linear elliptic equation, Laplacian u plus f of u equal to zero in R3, where f is uh, a nonlinearity that you choose, say, C1, then you can produce a, a pair of steady state. So a pair meaning a psi and, a, and omega that solve the uh, Euler equation. So in particular, let me focus on, uh, on this example. It's just an example. Uh, it has many names. Uh, Kaufman school in Rosenhead vortex. Okay, it's uh, W0, it's uh, radially symmetric, it decays fast at infinity. Psi zero is like log, uh, and it solves, this is the way I, I knew it, it solves the, the Liouville equation. So uh, it is a solution, psi zero, of a semilinear elliptic equation where your f is the exponential. All right, so, so we have a solution of, of Euler, W0 and Psi0. But if you take epsilon positive, sm small say, and you scale W epsilon in this way and Psi epsilon in this other way, you produce other uh, solution to the Euler equation. And this solution look like uh, the one uh, drawn here namely our solution whose, uh, this is the, for the vorticity, our solution whose vorticity is like very, very high, one over epsilon square, if you sit exactly uh, at, the, at the point xi, you put uh, x equal to, or y e x equal to zero here, and you get uh, a constant, w0 evaluated at zero, multiplied by one over epsilon square, it's huge. But as soon as you go f a little bit far away from the point, uh, due to the fact that W0 is fast enough decay at infinity, this becomes small in exile. So this is a kind of a, a concentrated vorticity. And in fact, uh, if you take the limit as epsilon goes to zero, uh, the, your vorticity converge uh, in the sense of measure to a multiple the direct delta at the center of, of this uh, um, vortex. So in fact, uh, um, the analysis of uh, solutions, not, not steady state, but solution to the Euler equation with a concentrated vorticity uh, traces back uh, uh, to the work of Helmholtz, etc. So you can ask yourself, well, I produced before a, a solution with just one vortex. 
What about if I add several of them? Each one of them is uh, centered at def different points, Xi1 to Xi n. And uh, I also add the, the, the stream function in a similar way. Well, the elliptic part goes well. It's linear, so if, you, if, if your answer is a sum of something, it's a, it's a linear combination of something, you get a solution. But in, in the, the other part, you have no linearity. So it's not that for any choice of points that evolves in time, you can have such a solution. So let me try to, uh, I, I mean, let me uh, see with you uh, what is uh, the good choice or the necessary choice for the points xi j, for the centers. So let me say w epsilon xi and psi epsilon xi. I want this to be a good approximate solution to the, bo to the Euler equation. What do I do? I take them and I plug them into the equation. And just for practical reason, I multiply the equation by epsilon to power 4. And I compute. So let me compute the dt of w epsilon psi. You get the gradient of w. Well, w0 comes with 1 over epsilon square. You take the gradient, you get 1 over epsilon square. You, you, you take the derivative of psi, you get 1 over epsilon square. But you multiply by epsilon square to the 4, so you don't see any epsilon square to anything here. So you get this, and then the, the part, quadratic part, the nonlinear part. Now you can factor, you sum, you can factor, say you sum on j from 1 to n, you factor this uh, object that is everywhere. And what you have left in this bracket is uh, the part coming from uh, the evolution and the part coming from, say, somehow the interaction of the jth vortex with the others. So if you want that this is a solution or a good approximation, uh, you want this bracket to be equal to 0. But let's be less pretentious. Let's take this bracket equal to 0. When you take epsilon uh, 0, and when you compute this expression at the point xi j. So if you, if you make that bracket equal to 0, uh, what you get uh, is uh, the famous uh, Kirchhoff-Ruth uh, um, uh, system for the evolution of the points. So if you want to, to, to see a solution with uh, capital N vortices, the center of the vortices uh, better satisfy this uh, uh, Hamiltonian system. Okay. So there was a, a natural question that has been answered, namely, assume you have a solution of the Kirchhoff root system, the ODE system for the points, and assume that in a certain interval of time, zero capital T, these points never collide. Is it possible to find uh, a solution that in of the Euler equation that is in this interval of time uh, keeps uh, its, its shape very concentrated along with, I mean, around these uh, points that evolve in time? And uh, uh, so that uh, uh, as epsilon goes to 0, you see that the vorticity uh, looks like a sum of Dirac delta. So that along this trajectory, the vorticity remains concentrated. A, a more specific question is, um, uh, given what I introduced before, the sum of those very special uh, concentrated vorticities, uh, is it possible to have uh, a control of, on a solution of the Euler equation that uh, keeps close to, to what I described before? And this is, uh, this is uh, possible. All right. uh, this is uh, something that we did uh, with the uh, Junsheng Wei in 2020. And uh, so if uh, you have a finite interval of time, zero capital T, 
on which your points do not collide, uh, then you can construct, I mean, there is a solution uh, to the Euler equation with this form. So it's the W epsilon psi. Let me talk just about the vorticity plus a reminder, which is nothing. But uh, you can control the reminder. This solution lives for all time. It's Udovich theory. But the reminder, this phi epsilon, you can control it uh, very, very carefully, uh, even close to the uh, center of the vortices. Um, but um, in, in this interval of time. Okay. So there is here a constant uh, C that depends on the time interval you are considering. And if you push this t to infinity, it deteriorates. In fact, we can go, uh, say, to capital T of order log epsilon. But, um, but this estimates is true only, say, on zero capital T, right? Uh, there were, this is not the first result on these uh, topics, the, the singularization of point vortices. Uh, Marchioro and Pulvirenti and collaborators uh, uh, did a, a huge, uh, a very interesting amount of work on these topics. Um, but, and in particular, in their book, Marchioro and Pulvirenti uh, are telling us that in reality, if you consider the Kirchhoff root uh, system of ODE, generically, so apart from uh, a set of measure zero in the initial condition, the points never collide. So uh, you have a solution with no collision from zero to infinity, generically. So what can be said on the long time behavior of this uh, uh, vortex uh, solution? Uh, we cannot say anything. Uh, and this question can be related to the question of stability. Even in the case of, the, just take one, one W0, radial stationary decaying to uh, zero at infinity. And the question would be, well, uh, sorry, ah, picture. Uh, the question would be, uh, if you perturb initially your capital W0, uh, is the solution uh, close to, cap to W0 for all time? So we have learned about uh, uh, Arnold stability results. And uh, what is known, as far as I understand, in the literature for this problem are the result by uh, Bedrosian, Cotizelati, and Vicol, in which they prove linear stability in L2 for profiles decaying like 1 over rho to the 6, or faster, I guess. And um, there is um, another uh, result by UNESCO and GIA where they study some spectral property of uh, an energy in the Jevre class, well, don't ask me, please. You, you have expert <laughs> in the room, so. All right. So, okay, we cannot really say anything uh, on uh, what I said before. So, let me go to another situation. Uh, I want to consider, um, uh, in fact, what I will present is a, a result in, in which we can um, describe uh, with precision uh, for all time, uh, as time t goes to infinity, uh, what is the behavior of two vortex pair that uh, travel in opposite direction. This is the picture. Above, it's, uh, it's a picture of one vortex pair. Uh, so a vortex pair is a traveling wave solution. So you 
you, you get a, a, a vortex pair solving an elliptic PDE. But you cannot uh, uh, solve, get this solving an elliptic PD. It's not a traveling wave. All right. So a vortex pair is, uh, is up there. The red is, uh, we, we put, uh, sorry. <laughs> the red is a positive vorticity, plus uh, the, there, was, there were this coefficient kappa in front of, of the vorticity. Let's say, let me say it, plus and minus. And these are uh, uh, function solutions that are odd, odd in x2 and travel in the, the x1 direction. So this is a vortex pair. You see the vorticity, uh, one goes in one direction, it rotates in the other direction, they are symmetric. Uh, so what I want to do next uh, is uh, to uh, describe first, uh, because this is what we need, uh, a single vortex pair. And then tell you what we do with the two vortex pairs. But the understanding, uh, the precise understanding of one vortex pair is, is crucial for our result. So what is a, a vortex pair? How, what do you see in the uh, point vortex model? Uh, you consider uh, two points. And you put uh, them uh, with this symmetry. So you have xi1 here, it's called pq. And the xi2 here is called p uh, minus q. And uh, here you put uh, a positive charge, a plus one. And here you put a minus one. And you insert this inside the uh, kirchhoff root uh, system of ODE. And you get uh, this equation here. It's enough to solve in Xi1. Now, it's, uh, it's easy because uh, Xi2 minus Xi1, uh, the first component is zero. Perp, the second component of this is zero. So Xi, the second component of Xi1 dot is zero. So it keeps constant in time. Then you, you take you plug it in the first equation and you observe that uh, this uh, object, this point, uh, travels to the right uh, with a constant velocity and the velocity is proportional to 1 divided by uh, q0. So it's related to the distance of the two points. So this is the speed at which the uh, vortex pair travels. But as I said, a vortex, uh, a vortex pair as a solution of, of the Euler equation is a traveling wave solution. So this means that uh, it has the form omega of uh, a fixed profile omega zero uh, at x1 minus ct, see the speed, comma x2. So if you take that answer and you put it inside the equation, you get uh, that uh, uh, this is like uh, solving. Uh, so it, it reduces to uh, gradient perp of psi 0 minus cx2 dot gradient of uh, uh, omega 0, where minus Laplacian of uh, psi 0 is equal to omega 0. So, uh, so, and you can solve automatically this if uh, your psi zero, the stream function in this moving frame, uh, solves uh, a certain semilinear elliptic equation. And you call W zero the right hand side of the elliptic equation. So it's elliptic. What is a good choice of F? I could take the exponential, but I would need to cut it off. It's not known to me, and I don't know if it is known in general, that uh, example of vortex pair with non-compact support. So we choose another nonlinearity, but just because uh, it's, a s it's a simple, the computation, are, I don't know, anyway. We decided for another nonlinearity. All right. So let's uh, just 
look at this capital gamma of x. Capital gamma of x uh, uh, is uh, inside the ball. We are in R2. Uh, it's a positive solution of this semilinear elliptic equation here with a zero boundary condition. There is a power nonlinearity gamma, little gamma, uh, bigger than 11. And outside the ball, uh, you, you have a log x, something harmonic, with a, a negative sign in front. And in fact, this is uh, uh, the only solution to this uh, semilinear elliptic uh, equation here with a given mass. Okay. So this capital gamma will be our new stream function in a sense. And this uh, capital gamma to the gamma plus will be our vorticity. And look. Uh, this is positive, gamma is positive here, but this is negative, so this is a compact support here. All right. This is a, a, a semilinear elliptic equation that in my community is, is used, is studied, okay, you know everything, more or less. In particular, one very interesting fact, this is a, a, an autonomous, uh, no, the, uh, equation so if you have a solution you can translate it and you get another solution and you can translate in two direction you get another solution and then uh, which means that if you linearize this equation around uh, this gamma capital gamma and you look at the linearized operator and you look at the kernel of the linearized operator well it can be proved that in l-infinity the only elements in the kernel are the partial derivative dx1 and, sorry, dx2 of gamma. All right, so as we did before, uh, we can scale gamma capital gamma, gamma epsilon, you can scale omega epsilon, epsilon to power minus two. This, this is a solution of Euler with, with compact support and, and with vorticity very high. Uh, the, the support is included in, in a ball of center zero and radius epsilon. It goes to, W epsilon goes to the, a Dirac delta. So what would be the four, uh, at least at main order, of one vortex pair? It's like, uh, in, in terms of stream function, it's like, uh, let me fix the P to be, so, so the first component to be zero. Um, it's invariant and it's under translation in this in x1 direction. So it's just the stream function of uh, uh, centered at the point uh, zero q minus the stream function centered at the point uh, uh, zero minus q, one up and one down. The, psi, the, the, the gamma, the vorticity? Yeah. Yes. It's compactly supported. And the gamma is large. The gamma is log. No, no, sorry. The bigger than 11. Than ah, the bigger than 11. OK. So, so from, from an elliptic point of view, so the previous slide, uh, gamma is bigger than 1. And you can do this. We need gamma bigger than, say, 11 later on to control the characteristics. But, but, but uh, for what concerns, for instance, all what I am going to say for one vortex pair, gamma bigger than one is OK. So what's the regularity? If it's compactly supported, it's like a Yeah, compact. so what's the, 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 the bigger the gamma, the smoother it is. Okay. The flatter, I don't know. Yeah. All right, so we add up a two stream function. So uh, let me draw a picture here. We have this point here and this point there. And they travel in this direction. This is plus and this is minus. We add this uh, stream function and we also add uh, uh, the corresponding, say, 
vorticities um, corrected, but this is minor, um, in such a way that uh, each one has a, a mass. And they have the same mass, but with opposite signs. So the total mass will be 0. But in each one, we want to have the same mass as the, the solution in the previous slide. Okay? So we, but psi is like log. So this is a correction far away, in a sense. And, uh, and, and this is, um, so this cutoff is OK, because our vorticity in reality has a support uh, in, a, in a small ball around the uh, zero Q of psi sub psi. So we take R to be fixed, but OK. This is a fact. So a vortex pair. So for any for any given uh, for any given Q, so Q is uh, uh, this say. For any given Q, and uh, if you are given epsilon greater than zero, uh, define uh, uh, so there exists uh, a speed which is not really the idealized speed m divided by 2q, you have perturbation of size epsilon square. And you have a solution, uh, so you have a traveling uh, pair, uh, where the stream function is the one I described before, plus a correction of order epsilon square. And, um, and you have control on uh, the extra speed as well as on the extra stream function. Now, uh, Norbury was the first one that uh, rigorously proved the existence of a vortex pair. Um, there is work by Smith and Van Schaftingen, in which they use this nonlinearity. I would say that we also give some sort of contribution in the understanding of, in particular, the dependence on Q of these terms here, because we need them. And uh, these objects are orbitally stable. Elena with Milton and Geoffrey Burton uh, prove that. OK, so two more vortex. Uh, they're traveling in opposite direction. In this case, the vortex, uh, the point vortex uh, system uh, takes four points, n equal to four, and they are uh, located, say, uh, so we have here this one, and then we have here the other one. Okay? And uh, with, with this game of the plus and minus. So it's enough that we study. We have symmetry in the x2, uh, in the x1 uh, direction. We study just the movement of this one in the first quadrant. This is called PQ. And the system becomes, in this, way, in this, uh, in this case, this uh, system of ODE, where this capital F encodes the interaction, the interaction of this one with the, down, the one below that was already taken into account when constructed one vortex pair, and plus the interaction with the others. All right. So you can, uh, you, you, you can solve explicitly. And we take the following solution. We take the solution that, uh, so that the second component, the Q, the Q0, is bad notation, but Q0 bar, uh, converge at infinity to a Q infinity, to a number, positive number. So at infinity, we want to see a traveling wave, a traveling. Um, minus F. Am I right, Trish? Uh, I think one of them should be FPQ rather than F. Yeah, sorry, yeah. All right, so 
uh, this is uh, Q infinity, and then we have the P, uh, this P naught, uh, don't look at it, and then uh, it travels to the right with this speed, you see Q infinity here, and there are, there are other terms. But in reality, we learn that uh, the, the, ver the speed of one traveling pair is not m divided by 2 divided. Uh, m div there is a, an epsilon square perturbation that we have to take into account. It's, uh, it's important. OK, so in reality, what we do is uh, to study, uh, with again, the same mistake as before, uh, to study this uh, perturbed uh, system. It's a modified point vortex system that we can uh, s solve, treat, linearizing. And uh, the linearized operator is a very good structure. Uh, so this uh, matrix P uh, has these entrances. So when you solve, you in the first component, you see you have this uh, capital of, of 1 plus t. You think of t going to infinity. This doesn't look well. So in the first component, we integrate between 0 to t. And the second component, you get this fantastic minus 3. You, we integrate from t to infinity. And the solution of this modified um, uh, point vortex system looks like, uh, so th this is the initial, I don't know, OK? This is the true velocity with the epsilon square modification plus something that decays like 1 over t. And the q goes to q infinity plus something that decays faster, 1 over t squared. All right, so what is what would be a vortex pair? No, a vortex, two vortex pair. Two vortex pair will be a vortex pair psi r, which is the one to the right, minus psi l, that is the one going to the left. This is a, a function odd in x2, in x1. So this is the psi. And, uh, and you can imagine what it is. At least uh, at the first approximation, the, uh, the vorticity, it is um, of big size, is epsilon 2 minus 2, uh, times uh, a, a profile localized. Uh, around these two points on the, on the right and the one on the left. Okay? Yeah, sure. So, um, so in this language, the vorticity is always epsilon to minus two times capital UL minus capital UR. Uh, the other way around, but uh, it doesn't matter. So the support of capital UR is um, contained in two balls of uh, radius uh, epsilon, so of order epsilon, around uh, this point and around this point, and the other way around for uh, capital UL. OK, this is our result. So uh, take a, a q infinity positive and take a t0 so that um, the trajectory I described before, p0, at t0 is 10 q infinity. OK, whatever. Um, let me go back uh, to. So this is P0, it grows. So take T0 so that, uh, uh, OK. Then for all epsilon greater than 0, we can find the points. The point P0 and Q0 that I described before are not the real points. So you can find the P0 and Q0 so that uh, 
let me read the first. P minus P0 is of size epsilon cube. Forget about the log. And decays as t goes to infinity, like 1 over t. And we can find a solution, uh, omega epsilon psi epsilon, of the Euler equation with this form, where on the reminders, and in terms of vorticity is, is written with an epsilon to power minus 2 in front, and the reminders, well, these are a solution odd in x1 and x2, so let me explain only what happens in the first quadrant. So the, the reminder uh, can be controlled uniformly uh, in L infinity uh, for all time. In this way, the support is still connect, contained uh, in, in a ball of radius size, size epsilon around the P naught Q naught, which is traveling, uh, we have better control on some L2 uh, norm of the phi, and uh, we can control the psi. Uh, for an ET uh, bigger than T naught, namely, this object remain localized at all time. Let me uh, say a couple of rem remarks. So, if T is gambling in 1999, uh, they proved that in exactly this situation, I mean, the, po the point is the following. If you start, uh, if your initial condition is uh, uh, vortices like this, then you let uh, the flow go. And the point is to control what the solution look like in time. So what if Timmy and Sideris and Gambling did was to prove that the support it was growing like uh, t as t goes to infinity. And this, there was a very interesting amount of work uh, by Marchioro, if Timia, Sideris, Gambling, uh, about the control of the, uh, of the support in case of positive vortices. Uh, Marchioro proved uh, a <coughs> certain uh, result on, on how, grow, how the support would grow. Uh, if Timia Sideri gambling improved it, uh, there was also a result by Serfati that I didn't quote here, like t to power one half log t log t log t. Uh, all right. No. One fourth. A uh, one fourth. Yeah, one fourth log t log t log t. T to the one fourth log t log t log t. All right. Um, now let me also mention that there is um, a, an interesting. Uh, uh, result by Zbarski, uh, in which they put uh, three uh, vortices with, um, uh, but they are vortex patch, and uh, they expand in a self-similar configuration. We think we can also do this. And uh, let me make this uh, paper in which Elena, with uh, Milton and uh, Iftimia, they, they uh, worked on a uh, self-similar configuration for the vortex pair. Oh, and this is, um, okay, so this, what is the meaning of this picture? So we, we construct this, right? So we have two vortex pairs, this is positive, this is negative, this is negative, this is positive, traveling in this way. We can, and uh, we also constructed this. Now, the point, okay, the idealized uh, vortex point model has global solution, okay? If you just take uh, the idealized vortex point model for this configuration, you have a solution that 
don't live only between T0 and infinity. You can continue, and they go up. So the question is, well, can we glue uh, these two things together? It's open. We tried. We are trying. We don't know. OK, I'll go to the proof. OK? Um, uh, so the, the, this is the very, um, the, 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 say, there are three steps in our proof. Uh, these are, this is more or less a, a philosophy, or a mot I, don't know, I don't know, whatever, that we used uh, in the previous uh, result that I mentioned to you before on the point uh, the singularization, but also more recently on the leapfrogging uh, of our string. Uh, so in, in the first, first we start with uh, uh, an approximation. We, we already have an approximation, we improve it. Uh, then uh, we solve the equation on a finite interval of time, T0 to capital T. Uh, and how do we do that? Uh, well, first of all, we, uh, we look for a solution um, which has a certain form in terms of vorticity and stream function. Uh, a part of the vorticity will describe well what happens around uh, the vortices. And then in the stream function, we will have also something that takes into account what happens everywhere, outside the region uh, where you see the uh, vorticity. And, um, and in fact, uh, the point here is that we, we set up uh, a nonlinear, complicated uh, equation. We introduce a parameter lambda, an homotopy. So at lambda equal to 1, it's our problem. At lambda equal to 0, it's a simpler equation, simpler problem. And we need some a priori estimates. And these estimates should be good enough to then uh, passing to the limit as t goes to infinity. OK, let me start. Uh, so we want to solve the Euler equation. It's uh, the transport part, E1, the elliptic part, E2. So the choice of uh, T0 is in such a way that uh, um, our um, uh, initial answers, that is just the sum of two, um, so our initial, our starting point is just the sum of two vortex pairs. And uh, we need uh, them to be separated. And then we, we compute, because we add two things, we compute the error. Uh, if we add two things, the E2 goes well. But the E1, we have to check. We have to see. So again, we multiply by epsilon to power 4. And because of the support, that are separated in the, in the vorticity, this, uh, this error can be written as something that lives on the right plus something that lives on the right, left. Exactly. All right. So uh, yeah. So error to the left, error to the right. We just care about the error to the right because it's uh, of the symmetry. And um, so let me uh, expand variable. Uh, so I am here, and I expand this uh, variable there. The point PQ is 
is this one, and this is p minus q. And I just compute the error. So what I get is the first line, OK? The first two terms comes from uh, the derivative in time. And the second is uh, the quadratic interaction. Okay. Now we add and subtract minus epsilon c e1 gradient of u r. Because we want that uh, u r or psi r is a vertex pair. And then we write the rest. So the first term here, the i blue i, is 0 because, uh, b because we, uh, we have a vortex pair. The, the second part, i i, is due to the interaction between the vortex to the right, u r, and this stream function that is coming from the left. And finally, this third term is due to the fact that in reality we are not solving a traveling wave equation. The, the, the equation is not the traveling wave equation, right? OK, so um, but after manipulation, we can find um, a form of this error. It's, uh, it's, it can be written as in this way. So it's the gradient pair. So this is like the velocity of the traveling pair to the right uh, times the gradient of an error that has size epsilon square. Uh, the size epsilon is gone because we take uh, um, uh, solutions. So traveling, a uh, traveling, uh, a vertex pair is, a, is an exact solution. And besides, we, we get a ex decaying time also in the error uh, because we, we are not just adding four vortices well pos positioned. We are adding two vertex pair. Otherwise, we wouldn't have had uh, that time decay in the error. OK. So the uh, and we know more or less, uh, we know what is the shape of G two and of G. Uh, they they have this support, and uh, uh, yeah. So they they are they have the support traveling with the P naught Q naught, right? So we, we, we improve this. Uh, this is just the initial add sum of two vortex uh, pair. And we want to improve. So we introduce two uh, cutoff functions that are the drawn here. So here is the vortex pair to the right. We take um, a, a, a cutoff. Uh, around here that uh, moves together with the vortex pair and the same on the left. And uh, we look for a, a better approximation um, of this form. So the W star is the old W plus epsilon 2 minus 2, something new that we have to find. Phi R takes is on the right, Phi L is on the left, and Phi R is better expressed in the expanded variable. And uh, we do more or less the same with the psi star. It's the old psi. Uh, then uh, psi r is related to phi r through the Laplacian. We cut this with the cutoff, also the, la the left. And what is left out, we call it psi out. OK, so uh, if we take this w star now, psi star, and we put it in the equation, both in the transport part and the, in, in the elliptic part, we get the following. Let me start with the elliptic part. So we will get uh, that the Laplacian of this psi out 
uh, will be somehow related, will take into account the effect of the cutoff that we did on the other part of the stream function. Let me focus on the transport part. Okay, the transport part uh, is, uh, so we have this new um, phi r, phi l, psi r, psi l, psi out. We put them here. And, uh, and we get this, uh, this, uh, this, this thing. We comp just compute. So you will recognize here that we after multiplying by epsilon to power 4, why this epsilon square? Because uh, phi comes with a, an epsilon to power minus 2 in front. You multiply by epsilon to power 4, you are left with epsilon square. Then you have uh, a, a linear operator, linear in this phi r and psi r. You have the old error. You have something linear here in phi r, but multiplied by something small. This is small because it's far away, and this is small because p dot is almost like c. The quadratic part, the interaction with the psi r, the, the psi out. Same, uh, same statement for, uh, for the left side. OK, so let me focus on what I, because you know, he, this is, this is uh, epsilon square in front is small. This is the error. This is quadratic. This is small. This is small. So what's not small is this L. So let me understand a little bit better what is this L. So this L, um, uh, let me just uh, go back. OK, so we have, you have a C per, OK. Well, first of all, you put together this and that. Because uh, uh, minus C epsilon E1 is the gradient perp of uh, minus C epsilon Y2. OK, so you put it inside with, together with the psi, capital Psi R. So you get this one times the gradient of phi. And the left, the, the other, you, you, leave, you leave it as it is. But then this can be written in a nicer way. Somehow it's the gradient perp of the velocity. So it's the velocity of the right uh, uh, vortex pair dot with the gradient of this linear operator. Why, how do we get from, from there to this? Well, we use the fact that uh, U, capital UR, is uh, a, a traveling wave. Uh, so it's a, a function of psi R minus C epsilon Y2. So we just compute its gradient perp of uh, psi R dot gradient of UR. Well, we switch the perp with a minus. We... Um, uh, we, we, we compute this gradient perp of ur, it's f prime of epsilon times the gradient of what uh, it is in size, so the gradient perp. So we gain the gradient perp with a minus, and then we put this f prime epsilon inside the gradient of uh, psi r. The, there should be an extra term, but that extra term is zero, again, because the of the fact that uh, uh, this gradient, this f prime of epsilon is a function of, of this, of psi r minus c epsilon y2, OK? All right, why this is nice? Well, it's nice because so the error will look like uh, the epsilon square dt of phi plus this linear operator plus uh, uh, the original error that uh, we already discussed as this nice form. Nice form in the sense of the same structure as the linearized operator, plus terms that are lower order. So how do we solve? We solve just uh, solve, well, how do we improve? Uh, just taking these two guys, red, and forgetting about the others. And we can do that thanks to uh, the theory on the 
semilinear elliptic uh, equation that I described before. In particular, the fact that uh, this equation here uh, is a kernel, but you know the kernel. The kernel are just the translation. Okay. I mean, you cannot really solve. You have to imp since you have a kernel, you have to impose some orthogonality condition. But this is possible if you slightly modify again the points. And uh, uh, we combine this with a solving uh, with the integral, I mean, with the solving inside out. So what do we get? This is a fact. This is a result. So we can adjust the point. So the original p naught will be now adjusted by something that we call p1. But then there will be something else left that I, I you will not see in the rest of my talk. But we will need to, at the final point, adjust, still adjust uh, the final p tilde. So OK, so uh, there exist p1 and pq, q1 and p1 and q1. Sorry, I'll run. Uh, so their size is like epsilon cube uh, divided by 1 over t for p1, and q1 is epsilon cube divided by t, t square. And you can find, uh, you, you can find uh, an object, a function, a w star, an psi star of the form I described before, in such a way that now the error is much smaller. It's uh, epsilon to power 5, before it was epsilon squared with uh, a fast decay t cubed. And um, the, the second, uh, this is the part uh, of the error uh, coming from the transport. With the control on, uh, on this phi r star and the psi out. So they are small in epsilon and decay in time. All right. So. OK, second step. In the second step, this is a proposition. We proved the following fact, that uh, if you are given a, a, a t bigger than t0, then you can find a solution uh, of uh, the Euler equation with this structure here, same structure as before. But instead of starting from w0, we start from w star and psi star. Uh, so that uh, uh, these vortices, so the, the vorticity, say, the, the correction in the vorticity uh, satisfies some final condition. At the final time, capital T, it's zero. And, uh, and for the right and for the, for the left, it's the same. And we get this estimate in, in, in L infinity, the support, we can control the support. It goes as before. We have better estimate for L2 norms. We can control the, uh, the stream function and corresponding to, phi, to, to the phi and also the stream function, the part of the stream function that takes into account what happens far away in this way. Uh, for an ET uh, going to, uh, well, this is in the interval zero capital T. Okay? Let me more or less uh, explain a little bit uh, how do we do that. So the, the only thing I will, uh, I have time to discuss with you is, um, is the fact that now we cannot really, you know, Forget about epsilon squared dt of phi r. So we have the uh, sort of like the elliptic operator we had before with uh, corrections. Uh, this A star is nice. And this A star is nice. It's nice. It's small in epsilon and, and, and the case in time. 
because we started from two vortex pair. Okay, so let me just discuss about uh, this. Uh, uh, well, no, not discuss. The key lemma is this one. Okay, so if you have a solution that uh, at capital T is zero, uh, then you can control a certain L2 norm with weights. And with these weights, this is a bad weight. These weights is zero. It goes to zero. It's the support of the vorticity. And you take minus 1. In fact, this is the, the, the simplified version. We have to introduce cutoffs, etc. But let me say we have L2 weighted uh, bounded by we lose epsilon square because of this epsilon square. And then we integrate from t to t of the L2 weighted norm of the error. And this bound can be obtained uh, with the two elements. First of all, uh, an a priori bound on the quadratic form associated to the elliptic equation. The elliptic equation has a kernel. But then you consider the quadratic form associated to uh, that linearized operator and the, in the orthogonal of the elements of the kernel, you have a bound for that quadratic form. And we combine this with a Gronwall inequality and a good choice of a test function. OK, but this is good because we start with a, an error which is very small. It's epsilon to power 5 divided by t cubed. So say, this, uh, let, let's, talk, let's think about this L2, like uh, L2, uh, normal L2. Uh, so, so the phi uh, will lose to epsilon, and uh, you integrate, so you lose 1 t, but, but still you, are, you have epsilon q divided by t squared. OK, so, so we solve the, the equation. This, this just stands for the LP norm, OK, say so just the LP norm. We solve this, uh, this equation looking at it as a transport equation. So you have dt of phi, the gradient perp of the gradient of phi, uh, plus, plus things. Uh, in particular, these things that depends on phi itself. OK, so if you. If you just use Duhamel formula, uh, you uh, sorry, okay. So you have epsilon squared dt phi gradient perp of something dot gradient of phi plus r the rest. Okay, if you apply a Duhamel formula, you can see that the phi r uh, LP is like epsilon to minus 2, the integral between t and capital T of the LP norm of the error and the LP norm of what you have left outside, the, the psi r. This is just simplification. Oh, OK, so, so, so this you, you, you know what it is, because the error is epsilon to power 5 divided by t to power cubed, OK? The problem is this one. OK, you can bound the, the norm in LP of the gradient of psi r by the, normal, the norm of phi r in L2. But with the norm of phi r, you lose an extra epsilon square, and you have to integrate in time twice. So here, really, you, you lose a lot. You, you lose four epsilons and two t. Then you interpolate to get something better. And, you and use the transport again, uh, because now, uh, sorry, what is this? Uh, so you, you want to control something in the gradient of psi r in L infinity, so you need a, a control of phi r in LQ for q bigger than 2. Uh, this is the control we have via an interpolation between uh, between the L2 and 
this LP. And so that the, the L infinity norm of phi r uh, OK, you get uh, ah, you use what I said before, and, uh, and you get uh, this bound on the L infinity norm. And then you, you pass to the limit. As t goes to infinity, this is also a delicate step because the characteristics uh, don't have, uh, I mean, they grow. If you want to compare the character, the phi t of x minus phi t of y with x minus y, you have an exponential in the middle, <coughs> but we can control this. Uh, we can apply Ascoli Thank you very much for your time.